All right. Podcasters Roundtable, round 16. Podcasting is back. Have you heard? <laughs> it is back. We have a... Um, Where'd it awesome... go? Where'd it go? It went away, Todd. <laughs> Where have you been? Uh, I'm glad you're back, though. I'm glad everyone is back. Actually, it's Todd's first time here. He is our new roundtabler, and we'll get to the introductions in a second here. Even bigger than that, we have the Podcasters Roundtable meets the new media show mashup <laughs> here. So, you know, two of the biggest podcasts in podcasting. And, and I don't know that it, uh, Todd would necessarily classify it as a podcast about podcasting, but it certainly uh, talks to podcasters. And I'm enjoying the new format, and, and Todd can talk a little bit more about that in a second. And, uh, well, let's get right to it. Let's get to the introductions. We'll start on, well, my right with uh, Mr. Todd Cochran, new roundtabler. Welcome to Podcasters Roundtable. All right. Thanks for having me. It's uh, just happened to have me uh, available this afternoon, so it's nice to join you guys. Yeah, it's awesome. I hit up Todd last second. I've always want Todd to be on here. He's in Hawaii, so I'm on the East Coast. It's very hard to line that up, but uh, again, thanks for joining us. He saved the day because uh, he is the only new person on the roundtable. You know, we always have at least one new podcaster, so Todd's an epic one. All right. Next to him, his co-host, sometime co-host, I don't know, best oh, friend, co-host. I don't know, Rob Greenlee from the New Media Show. Hey, it's great to be here again. I think this is like, I think the third time, something like that, that I've been you, on the show. You get a t-shirt yeah. at 10. So oh, know. okay. Well, i got some work to do then, don't I? Mm-hmm. It's great to be here from sunny Seattle. It's about 78 degrees here, so it's probably not a whole lot different than what it is in Hawaii. <laughs> nice, nice. So we got the we got Hawaii and Seattle. We got the left side and the right side covered. We probably need to get someone here from the middle. Oh, wait, we got Mr. Dave Jackson, and he's close enough to the middle, right? That's Dave right. Jackson, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Cleveland has decided not to have a summer. We just it's overdraft. I feel like I live in London now, so it's uh, it's beautiful. So I mean, I don't know how much humidity you get there in Cleveland, but uh, usually a lot. We just yeah. it's we just don't see the sun. Well, and now, so and now that football season has started, we're all going to cry. So <laughs> welcome to awesome. Cleveland. Also aiming in the middle, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan, are you in the same state as Dave? Yeah. No, I'm in the southern Midwest. Technically, southern Kentucky, I mean, southern Cincinnati, which is technically northern Kentucky. But I'm Daniel J. Lewis from the Audacity to Podcast. That's where I'm from, where it is always sunny, shining, <laughs> orange, and blue. Uh, the happiest place on earth, right inside Daniel's little <laughs> internet box there. My, everything is happy in my little box. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. It's a PG show. Actually, it's, it's a G show. <laughs> It's a G show. All right. So we are, you know, really this this roundtable pivoted at the last second. And now that I got Todd here, we were going to talk about prepping your show for sponsorship in order in order to um, sort of set your show up. I know Todd at the uh, Blueberry Network there has some new uh, stuff going on where it's important to get stats for your show, maybe do an audience survey. But I don't want to talk about it too much because that's a show we'll have later (laughs) but having Todd here makes me want to talk about it now but there was an article today that came out and it said it said well essentially said podcasting is back the actually the only thing that it said about podcasting back was the title it said remember podcasting it's back and booming so just because it really only mentioned that in the title it kind of felt link Beatty, and I'm kind of wondering if uh link Beatty, that's uh he co-starred with uh uh, Annette Madonna. Benning in that show. Yeah, anyways. Uh, it felt link bait, is, you know, is it the, uh, is podcasting is back, the new podcasting is dead, right? Because over the last year, it seems like I'm seeing these articles pop up. Uh, Mitch Joel from Six Pixels, Pixels of Separation, I believe, wrote an article, sort of stirred that pot. And uh, Chris Brogan even says podcasting is the old new again. So a couple people over the over the last year have said this. And I'm just curious what we make of this, what we think uh, is going on, you know, as far as I know, podcasting has grown since its inception. So Todd, I think you read this article today. Um, you know, probably not a big deal, but it felt, you know, it felt a little, little spammy, a little, Hey, they're probably glad we're doing this, right? (laughs) Well, you know, it's the same characters, you know, there's a few new faces in there, but it seems like they don't know how to talk to other people in the space. And when these reporters go and uh, do these negative articles, they definitely don't talk to anybody in this space. But, you know, I, I just kind of laughed. They sent an email to my team. I said, hey, guys, uh, do you know podcasting's hot again? And, and so we had a little uh, fanfare with that this afternoon. But, you know, I think 
what all of us know is that um, you know the numbers continue to climb. The, the, we're adding audiences by you know, audience members or listeners and viewers by leaps and bounds. So it's you know it's it's continued to grow and it's growing faster right now. But it's definitely uh, there was never a decline ever. Yeah, so I guess having you here is a great resource for that. You know, you see a lot of the numbers, right? I mean, if anyone who doesn't know, you are uh, the man behind Blueberry, which we uh, most, a lot of podcasters, at least watching the show, use the PowerPress plugin for WordPress. And we thank Angelo and your team out there for doing that because it's killer. Um, what have you seen since, I guess, 10, 2004? You know, I say the numbers. I think I wrote it in the description. The numbers have continued to improve, right? Podcasting has never really had a dip in, in terms of listenership as far as I know. Well, you know, it, it, the, the bare facts remain that, um, you know, when you look at the numbers, the growth is consistent. But, you know, the, ba the thing that's been so hot and juicy for so long is that, you know, video is the hot thing. That's what you got to have. You got to have video. But in all honesty, uh, for the majority of the shows that are being very successful, audio is, you know, is still king. And I don't want to go and get into the, you know the minutia of it because I haven't pulled any data in the, you know in the last couple of weeks or probably in the last month. But you know the the numbers continue to rise and the number of unique people that are joining and, and watching shows and listening to shows are, you know it's it's never been it's never been better. So and I think too what we're starting to see is we're seeing a lot of, of content creators you know starting to step up their game a little bit and take their shows to the next level. So that's helping as well. Todd, since you've been podcasting since almost the beginning, or we can just say from the beginning, you wrote the book on podcasting, literally. Um, how, what kind of growth have you seen, like percentage-wise, year after year? You said it is still growing. Well, how much are you seeing it still growing, um, not only with your own show, but since you're tapped in with the Raw Voice and Blueberry stats? You know, I and Daniel, I probably should have came prepared with a, you know, with a spreadsheet, but I didn't. So... Um, you know, all I can say is is that we've had to add server bandwidth um, to handle the additional stats that are coming in. You know, we watch that very closely, and you know, Angelo tells me how many, you know, uh, hundreds of millions of uh, downloads we're processing a month, and he says this is when we're going to have to make some additional changes. And you know, I kind of judge it that way, but you know, the numbers are up, and we've uh, continually had to invest in infrastructure. Not necessarily to keep up to make sure we don't ever get behind, um, but you know the growth is there. It's just uh, and each show grows differently, you know. And I think the adage of you know we still seeing shows that are coming on, and you know within a year about seventy five percent of them fail. So we still have this very high burnout rate on shows that hasn't changed from the beginning, but you got a lot of shows that are they're still they're there that are sticking, you know and and those that stick are making headway, but I, I don't think you can quantify it from each show. It's each show is a little different. That really doesn't answer your question, but well, that's, I mean, the, the important point there is that podcasting is not it's not back from anything. It didn't dip. Right. People didn't go away, and no one stopped listening. In fact, more people have listened since the beginning. So, what's going on here? Why are we seeing podcasting is back? Um, do you think that what's back? Is the attention on podcasting from the old guard, old media? I mean, is that what's going on, Dave? Did you see this article? Do you what What do you think's going on? Yeah, it's again, maybe it's a slow news day because it used to be the fact that when you know I need some attention to my blog, you know, three little words, podcasting is dead, and I I would bite on that hook about eighty percent of the time and come over. I remember the one post. I think my comment was longer than the actual post. And uh, I have since learned that trick, and I, I'm, I'm with you. I wonder if this is just link bait, because it's you know. And here's Mark Marin, and here's the Nerdist, and here's the na 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 na. It's like you know, like ooh, Aisha Tyler. Uh, you know, she's not in every article. She's down every other article. So um, yeah, are I'm with all, you. Are they Go all ahead. on the? Do they all have the same PR person? I don't know. You're talking to podcasters, uh, Todd. What's a PR person? <laughs> Who has PR for their podcast? Maybe we need one, right? I think some of those guys do. I, I think you're right. And so, right, part of this, maybe, you know, it's a little bit of, is it the numbers that have gone away? No. Is it 
the maybe the perception that the uh, people who you know these big media sources. I mean, this came out in USA Today, right? So a lot of people see this. So have they created this perception that podcasting is going away uh, because the attention, their attention went away, right? In 2005, word of the year, and it had all this promise, right? You're gonna get rich if you start a podcast, and then you've got people, you know, and then you've got people saying, hey. You can't make money here. You know, Todd, you said that most shows pod fade because people try in seven episodes to be rich. It doesn't happen, which is ridiculous. And they go away and then the media attention goes away, says, hey, that medium is cute, but it doesn't work, right? So now we've got celebrities pouring in, right? Again, you said like Aisha Tyler, and I think this, you name the celebrity. It seems like they all have a podcast. And it's funny because this article, the, the kid they highlight in this article, he does videos. He's a YouTuber but he thought he'd try his hand at audio. So they're not even saying, they're not even making it clear that video is also pod. He could have been a video podcaster the whole time he was doing YouTube, but that's that's a whole other issue. Probably Rob Greenlee would love to dig into that one a little bit more. But again, so the word of the year in 2005, and the, the media attention is coming back over the last year because bigger names are getting involved. Maybe money is starting to pour in the space. So is that what's going on? Is, a, is it a perception that it's back because something else is like going on where you've got more popular people coming in. Daniel, what do you think? Well, yeah, the celebrities are bringing a lot of attention to it and making this, yeah, the new hot thing again because people are hearing, well, these celebrities are joining it. And think about Twitter. What made Twitter really take off? And when we started seeing major followings on Twitter were when celebrities were jumping on and getting millions and hundreds of thousands of people. I remember like when the first million was hit, I think it was Ashton Kutcher. Um, back then, the celebrities brought the attention, but still so many people on Twitter. Well, podcasting, I think this is the opportunity for those amateurs to really rise to the top and show that... Your show the- is so amateur hour, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, show that our amateur hour can actually match what these celebrities are doing with PR agents and production crews. But those podcasts that are just starting out, I'm, I am starting to get a little concerned about the starter podcasts of how hard is it going to be for them to get in this game when the game has gotten so much more advanced. You say advanced, but I mean, and we know niche's power in podcasting right and i think in the, in one of the articles that i read in the last years about four one four of them uh chris brogan did one mitch joel i'm not calling one out these are just guys who are sort of talking about this issue or saying podcasting's back and i think more importantly what they're saying is the attention on podcasting is back um you know with niche being so powerful i think chris hardwick is funny because chris hardwick's take is you don't need that many people to listen to your podcast. If you get 10, 20,000 people, <laughs> and you know that was his idea of niche because he comes from old media, 30 million people they need to watch your show to not get canceled. So, I mean, you know, I don't think the average podcaster here, Todd, is gonna is even going to get 10,000 subscribers. And, and maybe they're probably in a niche. If, you're niche. if you niche down enough, that's a little term coined here at the Podcasters Roundtable. <laughs> that's past, but you have to be a fan of the show to understand that one. If you niche down enough, you're probably not even going to see those numbers, right? So, well, I think also that that's also a reflection of Chris's philosophy too. I mean, he has his own podcast network, and I think for him to to monetize a, a show, he needs to have at least that kind of kind of success. So, I mean, yeah. he's totally speaking for what his own kind of kind of requirements are for his own network. I think. Yeah. Well, Dan, and so back to Daniel's point is, Daniel, you're worried that new podcasters who are amateurs, right? They're, they're doing it at their home studio. They've got a topic they're passionate about that they might struggle in this new environment. Is that what you're saying? Right, because the competition is so much higher now. I mean, yes, you can get great audio for low cost and it's really easy to start. So it's not an issue of starting a podcast and how easy it is to maintain the podcast, but it's an issue of how can you get noticed I know that uh, that reminds me of Michael Hyatt's book where he says, get noticed in a noisy world. Well, the podcasting world is getting more noisy. So, so many people podcasting now, I think it'll make it more difficult, but this is also that opportunity for people who are in their basements with a $40 microphone can show that they're producing just as good quality content and journalism as these celebrities are, just like many of the blogs showed. Todd, does does 
qu content, does the quality of the content, good content, does that still, is that still enough to, com to, to compete, to rise to the top? Does the cream still rise? You know, when we first got in, all right, the podcast, the tech people, you know, the, the geeks, we were all on top of iTunes charts. Then you've got some of the, the new media people come, I mean, the older media people come in and they dominate the charts. But can we, can a new podcaster, um, you know, get back and can produce a show at the level that's alongside a Chris Hardwick or a Mark Marin or something? You know, I think a new content creator can, but, you know, they're, they have to have some realistic goals. You know, they can't do this for 90 days and quit. You know, they've got to put a two- to three-year commitment on something. Number one, they got to learn. Their, if they're new, they got to learn their trade. You know, this is a, a space where you just get better with time the more shows you do. Content is always going to be king, so there's always going to be the flash-in-the-pants guys that come on and are really hot, and they, they zoom to the top. But, you know, it, it all really boils down to, you know, you got you got to put your dues in. And, it, you know, let's let's be straight up. You know, the folks that are coming into space that are, quote-unquote, the celebrities, you know, they have a distinct advantage of having a pre-built audience. Now, I felt when I started doing my show that I was pretty lucky because I was a blogger first, and I kind of had a – I didn't have a – believe me, I didn't have a big blog following. I'm not a great writer. So I probably – I'm still not a great writer, but the – it did give the show a little kickstart. So uh, someone that's coming in, I think it's important that they hook up with someone, if at all possible, hook up with a network or hook up with uh, uh, partner up with a show. Going on your own is, 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 is I think, is pretty risky at this point from a success standpoint. And I flew, and I really can't say where I was at, but Monday I was uh, not in Hawaii, and I was uh, in a meeting for about four hours with some folks and talking about the space, and uh, I left there feeling like, uh, man, it's, it's, it's like 2005 again. Now, I'm going to tell you, there is some exciting stuff that's happening. You know, there's a lot of people that have kind of uh, started to say, whoa, we, we really need to pay attention to this. Let's uh, put some money at it. Some people that have some different ideas. Um, I think that uh, there's a lot of potential here. Now, we also have to understand that people are going to be looking for ways to make this happen quickly. So they're going to go after celebrities and they're going to go after people that are well known. And this, you know, because you can't beat that. You look what Le you know, look what Leo has done for years. He took, you know. The success he's had on the radio and the success he had on television, mm -hmm. you know, and that was a huge, huge Kickstarter for, you know, and, and don't, let's not, don't get me wrong, uh, Leo's a great entertainer and he's also, you know, a great content creator. So um, from that aspect, he, uh, you know, he had, a, he had a great head start and, you know, and he still, you know, is doing great things. So I think it's critical for new people. They have a chance. They're going to have to connect up with someone. Um, to really, if, if they don't, that's okay. You can still do it on your own, but there's a lot of lone wolves in the podcasting space. Well, and Todd said something great there. He talked about expectations, and I think that's one of the reasons why the, quote, podcasting dead thing even came about, because God bless Mevia or whatever it was, pod show back then, and they're all like, hey, we're going to quit our day jobs. Check it out. And, you know, everybody was like, woohoo, and there were a couple people that did. You know, you uh -oh. had uh, Callie Lewis, exactly, a couple. Uh, you had Don and Drew, you know, you had a handful of people. And so I came on board, and all of a sudden it was like, oh, I'm, wait, I can't quit my day job on that unless I want to eat, you know, rice and beans for the rest of my life. And so, and then Yahoo built the, uh, they, Yahoo actually built a directory before iTunes did. And then shortly after iTunes came out, Yahoo said, ah, never mind. And that's when everybody was like, oh, hold on a second. So we had a couple little... I wouldn't even call them setbacks, but just the fact that it was like the expectation was, we're all going to get rich. You know, there's gold in them there hills. And then there wasn't that they went, well, never mind. And I think now that you get the, the Adam Carollas and the, you've seen where a couple people are starting to go, hey, you can make this work, that all of a sudden the Chris Brogans and the other people that have kind of walked away have said, oh, hold on a second. So I think that was part of it. Just the, the expectations that were set were like completely insane chris brogan yeah chris and speaking of podcasting is back chris brogan is back right because he he started off he was one of the early podcasters mm -hmm. and, then, and then he came back so it must be a reason right for him i think there is money in those hills once again you know does 
Um, did podcasting sort of from 2005, when it was the word of the year, to maybe last year, whenever this boom started, right? Whenever people started noticing, did it have a little bit of a credibility issue from the standpoint of how the mass media did the mass media? You know, we said amateur hour. Steve Jobs called it amateur hour, so he sort of beat it on the head. And um, the media, the, the old media is not paying attention because money's not flowing in. Um, did podcast is podcasting getting more cred as a viable medium? Yeah, I think that's what's really really behind this is that we're seeing a a a gradual shift in perception. But I think if you look at the actual article and the kind of um, thinking behind it, um, that's that's a little worrisome from a perception that that people, new people that are getting exposed to podcasting are, are thinking, well, currently or recently it's been a dead medium and all of a sudden now it's a cool and hot thing again. So it, it's kind of a thing that cuts both directions against us. I think it doesn't show a lot of, a lot of credibility for podcasting in the past, but maybe we're coming into a period now where there is more credibility for for podcasting, and I think it's that credibility is being driven by quality of content and the big celebrities, um, and so I, I think that it's probably a good thing that we're starting to see this happen again, um, and I, I got my fingers crossed that the momentum will continue in perception, and that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about reality here. We're talking about perception, and that's that's what hopefully if we can all kind of keep the momentum going, to build that credibility again I think that's important right I mean podcasting is dead is a completely negative connotation right yeah. is dead is gone it sucks goodbye at least here podcasting is back is a positive right I mean it's it's yeah. it's more <laughs> looking forward instead of saying bye-bye so um, you know I know that article also did talk about uh, it said Apple hasn't promoted podcasts since 2005 I don't know if that's true Todd would you say that's true do you, think, do you feel like that uh, what was what is the only thing we've ever heard out of Apple for podcasting? Ten billion subscriptions. We've never heard anything else. Ten billion, or whatever the what, number was. Uh, One billion. I was excited. Todd knows something special. <laughs> so Breaking they've news. Never, they've never, you know, I, I've long been on record that uh, Apple coming into space in 2005 uh, chopped the feet out from underneath a lot of people. But you know, let, let's just you know, let's just be realistic here. Um, Things have changed dramatically in the mobile space. Yes. You know, the, the article the, mentions the that too. The yeah. entry to, you know, the barrier to entry to consume, there is none. It's yeah. not hard. It's easy now. You know, just click and listen. You don't have to download. You know, you just listen. Any, you know, people, well, those that want to download and sync can do that, but the majority of people are just clicking play. And what are we seeing now? Not only is it easy to consume on a mobile device, but we're seeing a lot of support, right? So Stitcher's getting people in cars. Um, you know, you're on you're on Roku's, right? I mean, so there are it's going to more places. So it's not just on a phone, maybe just the iOS app. You know, and in Apple, I think, you know, I think maybe a little resurgence with the iOS app. They broke it out. I don't know if that was uh, better or worse. I think it's I good. I think it is definitely better because when even though it doesn't come pre-installed on an iOS device, when you have a new iOS device and you go into the App Store, Apple recommends several Apple-made apps that you should download for your new device. And one of those recommended apps is podcasts. So instead of podcasts being hidden in an app that's already on your phone, well, not it wasn't even in the app, so I take that back. But instead of podcasts being hidden where you couldn't really subscribe, now they're telling you this is one of the top apps that we recommend that you should get as a new Apple iOS user. So I, I think that, yeah, brought a lot more attention to it. And I really wish Apple would share how much of a spike that gave podcasting. Like how quickly did they approach that 1 billion number because of the iOS app that they released? Any thoughts, Todd? I'm just going to, you know, we look at the stats across all shows and iOS, whether it be the iPhone, the iPad, whether it be iTunes, they lead. They're, they're, they're always in the top five and very rarely in the top six. But, you know, what it's, what's really changed the space, too, is everyone has a device. And you, you know? Apparently, every, you have all of them. 
<laughs> well, you know, it's you know, let's be realistic. You know, the the price the price has gotten down. Parents are buying kids uh, devices. You know, the Nexus the Seven is like what two two fifty two seventy nine bucks. Yeah, man, it's amazing. You know. Right, and so again, with the podcast hasn't been promoted via Apple since two thousand five. Um, this article's saying that with new iTunes Radio that is pending, I suppose that that maybe that will um, push people or, or that iTunes will promote that and it'll lead to a promotion of of, of podcast promotion. Uh, Rob, should I beat down the Microsoft door a little bit and say, <laughs> you know, did Microsoft well, play a role? Yeah. Well, I. Th- I mean, one thing I wanted to say, uh, today was kind of a sad day for um, those, um, I know a few people out there that have been avid long-term followers of Zune. Um, I don't know if you guys all, all heard, but the the music and video marketplace in the Zune software is going to get taken down on the 22nd. So, so that means that the Zune software will only have podcasts in it. As far as the content offering, what is that? What is wow. Todd? What does that mean for podcasts? I, this is news. Does anyone else hear about this? We're mm-hmm. breaking news here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, in, in deference to Rob, yeah, I'm sure it's devastating. It's, uh, but so well, it doesn't the, doesn't have, have any. Do. Yeah, ahead, it doesn't, doesn't have any kind of. Um, down the line kind of change to the podcast on Windows Phone. That that is untouched. And so is the podcast area. It's just that the the whole music and video piece is no longer going to be there. Which potentially brought in right new podcast listeners. It, it yeah, it probably did. Maybe. But but really the truth is is that uh, not too many people were downloading TV shows and movies in the Zoom software anyway and that's one of the one of the big reasons why they're they're shutting it down. But despite despite Rob's best efforts and he does kick butt over there at Zoom and I think so, what does Rob, it say Windows Phone mean, podcast. Does that mean that um, on Windows Phone that music isn't going to be available? No, it's it's still going to be on the phone. It's just uh, well actually the whole Zoom and Xbox video side has never been on the phone. Okay. So that's a that's been a big hole in the platform for a long time. Um, so so this is really going to kind of force people into using the the Xbox uh, video and music apps to add content to their collections, and then they'll be able to play that content in the Zoom software, but they won't be able to buy it or rent it in the Zoom software. So for Microsoft, podcasting is not back. <laughs> well. It's really kind of unchanged is really what it what it means for podcasting. These other air content areas, yeah, there's changes. Yeah. So it sounds a little bit to me like what iOS was like before the podcast, the official podcast app came out from Apple, that you could synchronize from something, but there was no easy way to get it on your device. Am I understanding and explaining that correctly, Rob? No, actually... Um, Podcasts are on on the phone as well as still still in the Zoom software. The the music and video side, there is no experience, a marketplace experience on Windows Phone for for movies and TV, and but there is a marketplace experience on Windows Phone for Xbox Music. So so that's what's happening, and really. There is no change for podcasting. It's just that it could mean that fewer people are going to be using the Zoom software. Is really, really what the impact of this could be. Did did podcasting confuse a lot of people? Right, like Todd, you're talking about you had to go, you had to download it. We always talk about this issue that this sort of barrier to uh, getting podcasts started off in the beginning is maybe uh, something that was keeping people from or from mass yeah. adoption. You can't just dial it in on the radio, and we've seen that's getting easier. But we hear Rob talking. Um, you know, things changed. Our space is still so young, right? What, what is it? We can't even drive yet, right? Podcasting can't drive. <laughs> so, um, you know, has has the tech of podcasting been part of the reason, part of the perception that podcasting hasn't arrived? And now, oh, Dave, maybe you're better to answer that. Yeah, yeah, I, I would think because I know, you know, at the beginning, it's like if you were able to subscribe to a podcast, and everybody had an iPod, of course, back then there was no iPhone back in the day, and, uh, you know, once you got it to subscribe and you downloaded your podcast and, 
you know, heaven help you if you went on vacation because, you know, three days into it, it's like, oh, i got to go back home and sync my iPod back up because I'm out of stuff. And so trying to get people to subscribe was just, you know, a nightmare. And then if they didn't, you know, if, if somebody didn't have an iTunes button on their website, you had to go, okay, here's what I want you to do. Right-click on the RSS button. What's an RSS button? It's the orange thing with the strippy stripes. And they're like, the what? Just the orange button. Right-click on it and choose copy link. Okay, but what am I copying? Trust me, you're copying something. Okay, yeah. now go into iTunes, go into Advanced, and you'll have this blank box. Just right-click on that. Why am I right-clicking on it? It's empty. Just trust me. Right-click on it and choose Paste. So, so, did, we, so we, did we lose a lot of people who tried podcasting and said, I can't do this, right? Are they back? It could be. I think so. I know uh, I've been just doing random polls. When I when I get a class of like 20 people or 30 people when I'm teaching software, I did one yesterday, and I'm like, how many people listen to a podcast? Because I was doing it online, so I had a, a polling thing online, and it was uh, 82%. It said, yes, I listen to podcasts. And they were all in the Netherlands. It was kind of weird. I was teaching a class overseas. Um, but that was really impressive because I, I remember the days when I – you know, I'd say I do a podcast, and they're like, a, a, a pod what? And, of course, the old I don't own an iPod. And, you know, I, I don't have to go through that, thankfully, <laughs> as much as I have to. What do, what do you think about all of these streaming music apps and station apps adding podcasts, like TuneIn Radio adding podcasts, um, iHeartRadio now adding podcasts? Uh, there are – there's another podcast app that recently launched, but – these major apps that people have already been using for their music, and there's this possibility of iTunes radio, although that will probably only be music. But do you think that's actually bringing more focus to podcasts? Can't help. Can't hurt. Yeah, I think. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah, Todd, go ahead. You, you know, it's, and there was a couple of things that were done recently I kind of thought were kind of gimmicky, but... At this point, I think any place you get distribution is good. You know, I'm always, you know, you guys know me. I think distribution is king. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the more places you can find me or hear me, or that's, you know, that's money in the bank. So bring it on. I want to see. I want to be everywhere. I, I know you guys do too. So if this is if 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 by podcasting is back, if what we're really saying is uh, the attention's back, right? So. Regardless, we've been we've been cranking away, producing great content, and uh, maybe some more people are going to start giving us the attention they gave us in 2005, and that sounds like good news to me, right? I always say you're going to need, you know, in the beginning, I'd go to a meeting of podcasters, and if you started talking about money, it was a, a schism, a, you know, right down the middle of the room. Right. You had the half that hated you because that's in, <laughs> and I get it, I get it. I, what it was born out of was just a pure love for being able to do this right D democratization of the media right we can all sort of get our voice out there and you start talking and people got over that right they understood this is hard work right <laughs> i mean you get paid in a lot of ways but money sure helps get the mic turned on five years down the road right mm -hmm. and so um you know now is you know todd do you think with the attention the spotlight or or, or celebrities coming in is the money going to start showing up you know there's there's two things we've been overcoming. Uh, we've had some players in the space that have abused the media buyers. Mm. Um, I guess for a better word to say is um, the ROI wasn't where they thought it would be. And media buyers know where their ROI is supposed to be. So that's one of the reasons we've done some things that we've done recently on the business side is we're trying to... Are you saying like... like Terrible CPMs? What do you mean by? I'm talking about maybe some people are cooking the books a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, so the advertiser came to a podcast or whatever it was, put in a space, didn't get the return because the, the maybe the media, the content producer was saying, "I'm getting X amount of downloads." I mean, you're saying they're cooking the books. Uh, some people could even be victim of bad stats. Who knows, right? But right. I do think a lot of people. Out of almost not embarrassment, uh, some people just want to say, hey, "Yeah, I get this many people listening." They only get a hundred, and they say they get a thousand. Yeah. Um, monthly downloads—that's where they go. They that's it. Quote their monthly downloads. And, and I don't, you know, and I don't, uh, you know, it happens here on a weekly basis. I get a call from someone; they want to be on the network, they want to be on an ad buy, they give me a number. I say, "Okay, fine, get on the stats," and 
it ends up being a different number, and I, it, I just, you know, at this point in time, I trust but verify. And I don't, and I understand completely. You know, everyone wants to be successful. I can't blame them for wanting to be successful. But the money left. But, Any money that tried, did they leave? Money's still here. Money's being. There's more players, so the money's being spread around a lot more. There's there's plenty of money being spent. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I think what you're going to see is that as this picks up, we're going to start seeing more media buyers come into the space. If the popularity, and I'm going to tell you, we want those celebrities. Yeah, we want right. all those big shots. We want those guys. We welcome them with open arms because if you, if you care about the space, you do want those, right? I mean, you, want them. you, you need the Oprahs to bring the masses. I mean, it, it really That's depends right. on what you're looking for, right? Some yeah. people they yeah. want to do this from their studio and talk about the the favorite their their most favorite topic, and they don't care if 50 people listen. They're just doing it for the love. But right. in order, if you do care about the success of the medium, if you love putting your voice out there and having it continue to do yep. that successfully. And reaching a level that you know, you can be up in the iTunes charts or the Windows Phone charts alongside an NPR or something. We got it. We need, we need big time names. Yeah, and 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 they will they will help bring the money. And the radio guys are starting to understand the space more than the digital guys are. So that's helping us as well. You know, in the first five years, I never dealt with a radio guy. Never. I mean, I never had a radio buyer I talked to. And I don't want to get this to a money discussion, but now we're talking to radio buyers, and they fully understand it. Um, they're learning, but it's 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 much better than what it was. Well, what do you mean when you're talking to radio? How does that, for, for I think the average person listening here, you're way inside baseball, so because you okay, see so, all that stuff, and you're you're savvy, but we don't know what that means. So when you have a um, an agency, um, let's say in New York. And that agency has divisions. They'll have a digital. They buy banner ads and YouTube's uh, uh, clips, and you know, they basically buy the digital stuff. Radio buys broadcast radio, brought to you by 8:30 a.m. here in Honolulu, Hawaii. So they buy local broadcast spots for national buys. Then there are broadcast buyers that buy what you see on TV. So what's happening is, is the radio buyers are, for a better word, under pressure. And they're looking for new opportunities so that they are not out of a job in five years. So the radio buyers are starting to say, hmm, podcasts are pretty damn close, sorry, are pretty close to radio. So I think the demise of and the, the, the increase of being able to click on anything in our phones is driving people to this and not what's in their car radio, so that's going to help us. Um, radio's never going to go away. It's a local right. market. It's the drive time market. It's never going to go away, but we're going to get helped by those radio buyers that want to still have a paycheck. Well, the, the coolest line on your last episode when you were interviewing the guy from Radio 1, I loved it. I was like, all right, got to play that clip. As the guy says, if you take a product, the right product, matched with the right podcast audience will outperform a radio audience hands down. And I was like, amen, brother, preach it. But the key <laughs> is there is you have to have the right product and the right audience. It's, you, right. You're not going to sell knitting needles to the heavy metal guys. It's just not going to work. It all comes back to the money, guys. I, mean, I hate to tell you this, but the money is going to continue to help this space grow. People hate that. The purists hate that. Money, yep. oh, no, you know, but it, the money is going to... The money is going to help the space. Well, and when the money comes in, the other somewhat bad, I don't know, bad thing that I worry about is everybody hears that podcasting is the next hot thing, and then I see services where it's like, I'll do your podcast for 500 bucks a month. And I'm like, what? And then I see, you know, well, look, it's the new podcast hosting. We're, well, it's, you know, $40 a month. I'm like, really? For how much? What? And it's limited bandwidth? What? And it just seems like... You know, here come the snake oil salesmen. They're going, yeah. look, it's you know, and they're all quoting the stats. You know, here's the Edison stats. Look, get on board podcasting, and then they just, you know, and then it's it's us guys that come along in this community that come along. They go, oh man, I'm really sorry to hear that. You got completely hosed, you know, yeah. and it's like, oh, all it's, right, let's it's great for my consulting business. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> well, that is, I mean, that is a really good kind of kind of uh, way to kind of transition to a topic um, going back a little bit to what we were talking about earlier about these these new platforms that are coming up like the swell and the 
the TuneIn radio folks and those kind of guys. And I've I, I've talked to a lot of the the CEOs of these these companies and these platforms, and unfortunately, the perception that I get from them uh, is that they're they're just using podcasts as another piece of content in their their game, and they're not really taking it very seriously. And I think that that's that's a big danger sign um, because. Lots of what what I'm starting starting to see and have been seeing for for a while is really lackluster um, kind of software and experiences around podcasts on those platforms, and it's it's not going to be something that uh, lots of people are going to use because it is such a poor experience. But those people that own those platforms are focused on music or they're focused on something else, and so their eyes are off of the ball, and that's a danger that we could get into here of of uh, really giving a new group of possible audience members a bad experience that will keep them away. Um, and I don't know if, if the rest of you guys wanted to talk about that or not, but it's it, it's a perception that I have anyway. I, I actually have been kind of um, kind of wowed by the the new Swell app. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have seen this or not. Uh, it's a brand new it's a brand new company out of San Francisco. They've gotten about 15 million in venture funding, um, but they're only on the iOS platform right now, and it's it's a Pandora for podcasting, is what I would call it. Mm. So that, their that's their important, platform I think. discovery yeah. is a problem, right? Still, yeah. right. And their their platform is built around the whole concept of learning about what you like in content. Look at look at Daniel and Dave. I think they're actually looking up on their phones. Yeah, I'm yeah. like I'm on it. <laughs> I'm there too. Yeah. Everyone's there. Everyone's there. Now, so, Rob, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Keep going, Rob. I thought that was funny. Yeah. So it was just um, <laughs> that. Yeah, that new kind of concept Thanks. that that this company could bring to the table here is to help people discover content um, in a much more personalized way, more like what the success of Pandora has been, where where the software learns from what you listen to and delivers more of that to you. Right. Um, so anyway. That's all I was really going to say about I, it. I think that's a big deal because I think as we talk about the money and the celebrities, and I've seen a little bit in the chat room, the average podcaster starts to, to fear, um, you know, and there is only so many hours in the day, so much content someone can consume, and yeah. that the, they, these nice, you know, niche shows, these uh, producing amazing content for years now may somehow get buried or even the money won't won't go to those shows, right, because they can't compete. They don't have ad buyers or uh, mm -hmm. the massive numbers, but Discovery... Uh, is still you know a huge issue and that's I, I love Pandora because it does I don't have to do anything it just finds stuff for me and then I can just reject it when it's gone so I hope it has that functionality that would be a great way I mean yep. to find a podcast these days most of the time I get it because someone else says it on their show right they'll recommend that's how I'm getting most of my new discovery so I don't know what anyone else what do you guys think about that that uh, it's definitely something we need I think absolutely yeah, because it's that I'm with you. I, I occasionally will go in to iTunes or Stitcher simply because they have people that listen to this also listen to this. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's why I find out a lot. Or I'll hear somebody interviewed on another show, and I'm like, oh, they have a podcast. Oh, cool. And, and Rob, back to, more back to your issue. Uh, you know, where you said that a lot of sort of getting in maybe for the wrong reasons, um, or the way they're treating it. Uh, is 2017 hi, uh, headline going to be podcasting is back? <laughs> are, 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 yeah, exactly. are we worried about ruining, yeah. uh, right, scaring away more people? Well, and I think it's it's one of those things that it really gets back, like Todd was saying, it gets back to money. I mean, money is going to help all this stuff. Um, the more money that can be flow into this this industry or this platform or all the platforms, the more likely it is that those platforms are going to improve themselves to create better user experiences. Right, and and a celebrity, you know, Alan Newsom in the chat room says, if a celebrity does a show about the Andy Griffith show, it can only help draw more people to listen to Andy Griffith podcast, so it would help yeah. him more, right? So, yeah. so he's exciting, and he's excited. So, um, Todd, with you know, I think again that the. Uh, I think I've seen it in the chat room a couple of times. People are saying, well, there's just no way that, you know, the real power of podcasting, which is niche and, and providing content that you're not going to find on regular TV or radio. Um, you know, they don't think they're going to get a piece of that pie. Obviously, it's not, I think a network is a lot of that number is money is going to flow to a network. So if you if you're interested in that and, and maybe the gold rush that is 
coming to podcasting because people are realizing how awesome it is. Uh, maybe a network is the way to go if you're looking for a piece of that sort of ad revenue. You know, the, the network model, you know, well, heck, you know, I think I launched the first network, the first mm -hmm. tech network. And, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. We have been very successful with uh, the advertising that network. Um, millions of dollars have come in to that group um, since 2005 um, and it's because they you know the network team members team up and but you know it's really tough I, I, you know it's like herding cats running a network so if you are gonna hook up with someone and I recommend people do you know hook up with someone number one you can trust number two that you can get along with and understand that someone kinda has to be the boss but at the same time you wanna keep your creative independence so that you can create content uh, but I think it's really, you know, if you're a comedian, you got to get hooked up with some other comedians. That's how you're going to build, and, and that's probably your quickest route to success for making money. Um, Works on YouTube. Yeah. You know, they, they encourage a lot of, in fact, they, they rank you better, or, or maybe they give you more attention when you team up with other YouTube content creators. So it's a model they've definitely promoted to link up. But, you know, in, in, in all honesty, you know, what we have to continue to do is we have to continue to build audience as podcasters. We have to continue to promote our audiences to tell other people about this space. Uh, we have to build volume, uh, you know, and that means we're, you know, we want 150 to 200 million people tuning in to three or four podcasts every month. And then once we hit that level, um, those are real numbers. That's starting to compete with broadcast uh, radio and television, and that's when the dollars will come. Now, if you're not worried about the dollars, keep creating, keep creating content. What, you know? what is your experience? You, you've talked about the money that's flowed into podcasting already. So there are companies at, who have money who get it, right? right. What, what is Talking to those guys, what has been their experience? They, I'm sure some of these probably were in uh, maybe in your network in the beginning, and they're probably still there, right? I think Maybe, uh, you know, you always hear this, the same ones, Netflix and GoDaddy, right? But they obviously see something. Yeah, well, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. If they hadn't been, go, if GoDaddy and uh, Citrix and a few other companies had not been in the space, uh, we would not have survived. My company would not have survived. We couldn't have done it. Um, so for, po for and, them, podcasting is not back. It's always been a great place to be. So. Yeah, and you know, and and they're always looking. You know, don't get me wrong. We have to make the numbers, so they're always looking to optimize ad buys, and they got stricter on the rules. You know, there's different things that are going on, but don't get me wrong. It's they understand the space, and you know, I think they laugh all the way to the bank. Uh, they wouldn't dump the type of dollars they do each month if they weren't having results. You, uh, companies are not prone to lose money on advertising. They just don't do it. And yeah, that's it's kind of the irony, right, for the companies that do are they actually they're actually getting the good deal, right? I don't think that they understand or even some companies realize how much they're getting from being on a podcast. You get in the back library, right? I mean, I, I guess that's different, right? I guess we have some technology now where ads can be inserted and taken out, right, through yeah. software. But you know, and there, there's some folks out there trying to take advantage. There's a, you know, because they know that all the inventory is not being sold. You got some media buyers coming in and lowballing. You know, I dealt with someone over the last two weeks, um, did a lot of work on a campaign, and you know, we got right down to the, you know, basically the final deal. And he he basically dropped a bomb on me and and gave me a CPM rate that wasn't worth it. I had to walk from the deal. You know, so. Um, because if I took that deal at that level, he's just, you know, the word will spread. They're like sharks. Um, so we just couldn't do it. We couldn't do the deal. And it was a significant amount of money. But uh, the podcasters would have probably said, oh, my God, what are you trying to do here? And they wouldn't have been happy. So, you know, there is some give and take when it comes to media buyers. I told the guys, I'm not bu you're not buying remnant content here. You're, you're buying post endorse content. So 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 they'll be back. <laughs> well, if they aren't, I don't care. I'm not taking the deal at the, at the level that they were trying to impose. Right, but they'll they'll find out they probably screwed up because uh, what I, they really could have got was, you know, podcasting is not what they think it is apparently. 
Well, and and I appreciate that just as a podcaster because I realize it's hard to leave money on the table. Oh, it's hard. And uh, I appreciate that because we all benefit from that by not just saying, well, okay, it's the only thing I can get because, like you said, you're setting a really bad precedent there, so uh, I appreciate that. You know, and it's it's a challenge too because you want to keep the content creators, you want uh, revenue rolling into them, right? You know, and you and you don't want to come in and say I don't have nothing for you this quarter. I mean, that's the worst thing I want to do. But and it's just the realities of it. And, you know, and you know, our business has changed a little bit over the past couple of years too. But it's uh, I think it's been a good change. Well, we're getting we're getting down yeah. to the about the final ten minutes. Um, it, Daniel, are you saying anything? You've been watching the chat room. I see you typing in there. What's a general opinion? You know, with, with this whole podcasting is back thing. I mean, obviously, we're not buying into that. It's probably it's probably a little bit link bait. Um, it, what they're really talking about is the attention is probably back on podcasting. Uh, this is typical podcasting is dead type stuff. But what's the chat room been saying? Anything? Well, the biggest thing I'm seeing in the chat room is that they are uh, pointing out how that just like podcasting is rising again. Well, many podcasts are going to fall again. For every, you could almost say that for every podcast that starts, another one pod fades, or maybe a couple pod fade. So, yeah, you're going to have the come and go of the podcasts. And it really depends on what the podcaster wants from his podcast. Are right. they doing this as a hobby? In which case, all the more to it. I mean, look at how many people have a hobby that they do faithfully for their entire lives and pour money into it and they have absolutely no expectation of getting famous, getting money from it. They just enjoy it. And a lot of people are doing that with podcasting and that's great. I think the the podcasting is back idea might make more people think, oh, now I can make money with my poorly presented <laughs> cheap content. But then again, this might also give more people the inspiration of, wow, one billion subscriptions. What if I just had a tenth of that? And this is the opportunity that uh, to really pull the trigger and put something great out there. And greatness does not come in dollars. It comes from people. That might be my closing statement right there. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was just wondering who, who on this panel is going to be the first to go make an infomercial that I click on at 2 in the morning and say, want to start a podcast? <laughs> $500 a month. I'm going to see Dave on TV tomorrow. Public a- <laughs> it's public access, but he's going to be on TV. You want to start a podcast? I'm Dave Jackson. That's right. Let me tell you about podcasting. Three something to stores. sell. Order now and we'll throw in three Ginsu knives. <clears throat> Which you could use to stab yourself while you're writing show notes. Sorry, I, I hate See, show that's notes. That's a service. You want to make money in podcasting? There you go, right there. Start a show notes service. You will make millions because we all hate writing show notes. I need a cheap transcription service, Todd. Is that ever going to happen? It could. Isn't Google going to do this for me? Come on, Google. But then everybody will be able to do it, so there will be no strategic advantage. Mm-hmm. I just, yeah. It's true. I mean, no juice off it, but it would sure make my blog look a lot better. They don't want to see your, uh, you know, they, if you saw a transcript of this show and put it in a blog post, no. It, what, it, what are you trying it, to it say, Todd? What are you trying to say? <laughs> yeah, transcriptions are not good for show notes. Mm-mm. But um, no. I want to come back to the iTunes 1 billion announcement. And I think that's awesome for Apple to announce that because they don't tend to put numbers on things unless they're proud of it and they think it's something worth telling people. Sure, sometimes their numbers are a little bit weird, but uh, still 1 billion subscriptions, how they track that, how that's measured, I don't know. But iTunes represents, what, 30%, 30 to 40% of the podcast market now? Well, I would say it's the iOS ecosphere. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. the Apple podcasting ecosphere, yeah. iTunes and iOS. But you know, it's the you know I think more today the phones and the iPads and the you know iTunes still has a certain amount to it, but mm-hmm. yeah. So they're they're tracking from that both the podcast app and iTunes, which are I think some of the easiest ways to get podcasts for free without purchasing some uh, special app for your device, uh, iOS device. But a billion, and that's just part of the overall market. So that's yeah. massive yeah. that there are 
billions, probably 3 billion podcast subscriptions accounted for out there. Many have come and gone, of course. But I think, of course, that number is only going to continue growing. But people are going to start consuming more content from a podcast, I think, because radio stations and uh, regular old media style stations are starting to tell people, if you miss this, then you can get it in our podcast. And Every ESPN show seems yeah. like it has a podcast, and they win awards. Yeah, and That's I think we're also also kind of moving into a new phase where a lot of people are going to start consuming this content and not even realize that it's a podcast. So mm -hmm. I think we're going to have this kind of the ceiling that we're going to hit on people's perception of the name uh, podcast, and it's just going to transition over to just getting audio and video content through these platforms. And I think that's that's actually one of the big challenges that I, I see going forward, you know, beyond this point, is that from the research that's been out there, and you guys have all seen this too, is that the the name awareness for podcasts has actually been pretty flat here over the last few years. And I think that's a reflection of what's happening in the market. I think that the perception of the word podcast and what podcasts represent to people is not really going to grow grow much, but but the content will continue to grow, and I think that's what's going to be a probably one of our biggest challenges. I think is to somehow make that leap. I don't know what you guys think about that, but I think I think well, I think you should go back a couple episodes and, and put some comments into that. We we talked a little bit about that our, our controversial uh, yeah. episode where uh, yeah, yeah about you were, what you it's were called yeah, yeah yeah so yeah. so but. Um, you know, I think a lot of us use, I don't think Todd, I don't know how much he's used the word podcast. I hear him say content creator, right? Online content creator. A lot of us use the word show interchangeably. I certainly do. Um, and I think, uh, Rob, that a lot of people, I, we've already hit that point where a lot of people probably do listen to content that they don't realize mm -hmm. they're listening to a podcast, right? So those yep. surveys that say, have you listened to a podcast? They may even know. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anyone else have feelings without getting into total discussion about the yeah. word podcast. Yeah. Well, I could see with with you know services like iHeartRadio. You know, if somebody comes across my buddy Mike Russell, well, he's been on the Podcasters Roundtable. He's on iHeartRadio now with Music Radio Creative, and so there could be people listening to that, and they have no idea that they're actually listening to what originally was a quote mm -hmm. podcast. It's just streaming content. Well, look at video. Video still, even that article right there. They said it is kid was doing video, and he's. He's going to try podcasting, right? He could have been a video podcast the whole time. So video doesn't get, and I'm a little defensive. I start off as a video podcaster, but it doesn't get the love that audio does or the recognition. Some people don't realize video is a podcast. And of course, I, 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 I announced on, I think, the last episode that we are going to be the uh, the very first number one iTunes PDF only podcast. So <laughs> many ways to go with this. I'm taking the EPUB corner. EPUB. <laughs> All right. I'm going to win an award. That better be at the uh, podcast awards time. That's right. Best PDF <laughs> podcast. <laughs> okay, you buy the trophy. We'll put it up as a category. Oh, I'll buy a trophy for myself. Don't worry. I need to. If you have not been on the show before and you haven't, Daniel waves his trophy <laughs> like it's a conch. Okay, to speak. And <laughs> there it is. I don't think we've seen it for an episode. No, but I missed Ray's, it. Ray's going to have his own trophy. He waves. <laughs> So that's a little promo too, right? The Podcast Awards is held yeah. at New Media Expo. I think everybody here is going to be at the New Media mm -hmm. Expo uh, in and speaking. Las Vegas. And speaking. Yeah. That's amazing. So come on out. And and I'm hoping that we'll have a live Podcasters Roundtable. Uh, and that will be a chance to really grab some some other big names. And uh, I hope hope we see you there. So that's a good chance to come out and see us. There's going to be the Podcast Awards. Uh, maybe Daniel will win two this year. Who knows? <laughs> No, we can't have that. <laughs> no, his head won't fit in the screen anymore if we do that. <laughs> well, again, wrapping up, I think, um, is it, I guess maybe the moral of the story is maybe the attention is back. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what's back in podcasting. And, yep. uh, you know, if that's the case, uh, you know, Todd, the money, uh, hopefully the money shows up, right? And Todd's showing us the money is here, but more money's going to show up and podcasting is just going to become you know, it's just going to become that more viable. And maybe some of us can actually uh, make a, a little bit of a career out of it if we haven't already. But, um, you know, Todd, I know you had an announcement there with uh, Blueberry or Raw Voice. You guys have the verified stat. So if podcasting is, if the attention is back and the money's coming, tell us quickly what verified stats are. What's the difference and why we'd want them? 
You know, basically, uh, Raw Voice certified, the announcement we made on that is a, really a, com a, a combination of, I guess, I don't know if that's the right word here, destroying the English language. Basically, eight years of work and knowing, looking at data. And we got to a certain point with our corporate customers where we felt so good with the data that we felt that we would be able to go out and basically say, you know, we're going to give you a certification. We're going to put the company behind the numbers. If you need to have a media buyer validate it, a media buyer have an audit, uh, you need a, someone that's going to buy your show. You know, there's all these things that go in and verifying numbers, and, and we're actually going to have a, a confirmation system built where when you get your report, there'll be a little thing on the bottom with a little code, and the people will actually be able, and that person you hand that report to will be able to validate that that report is, is the real deal. Um, and again, it was largely driven by our corporate customers saying, "Hey, we want you to certify our stats every month, put the stamp of approval on, and say this is the this is the numbers we're standing behind." Um, we're talking with a lot of networks, a lot of folks that want to come up on the system. Um, we have some additional steps. We're actually going to go through what we hope is a, a third, another like someone's going to verify our data. Mm -hmm. So we're going to actually reach out to another company, and and hopefully they can come back and give us this. Uh, a special stamp of approval that they have, and that will help to, you know, again, solidify our, our spot in the space of having good data. And, and that's really what it's all about, too, is we want to make sure that um, moving forward there's an equal playing field for all parties, and uh, media buyers are even talking to us as well. So it's kind of, it's, it's kind of a cool time for us. Yeah, we we talked a little, we mentioned about inflated numbers and that maybe it scared some people away because they didn't get the return that they were expecting. So any podcaster could have these stats and feel fairly confident that these are the actual numbers they're getting, right? So maybe maybe a first step in if you're starting to think about how am I going to get maybe a piece of the pie? Here's a good first step. And you guys have a free stats to start with. Right. You know, people at yeah. the show always want to start off on free, and that's totally understandable. So you have free stats. You guys can get over to uh, to Blueberry and get that. So awesome. Um, go ahead, Todd. And, and, and on the commercial side, we've got commercial stats for the folks at Rob Lace, too, for those that don't want to deal with the terms of service at Blueberry. So, um, but, what, what, was, where's, what's, what, about, what did I miss? What's the negative there? Oh, there's no negative. It's just, you know, example, I, you know, if you had a network and you came to me and said, I got relationships with some of the same advertisers you do, mm -hmm. there's a conflict of interest there if they become a Blueberry customer. So we put them on the Raw Voice side, and that's the commercial offering. So there's we, it's basically a separation of church and state. Gotcha. Sounds good. Uh, anybody else? Podcasting is back. I'm glad the attention is, is you know, if any, if it may be the link bait, that kind of sucks. But if the attention is here, I'm, I guess I'm excited. One of the groups of people that I think really need to recognize this more are actually social media people. Uh, it, that sounds so ironic to say that, but um, last year at, or earlier this year at New Media Expo 2013, I spoke with, I think, the editor of Social Media Magazine and talked about Monthly, getting some podcasting content in there. Mm -hmm. And his response was basically, well, I don't really see podcasting as social media. And I was just at a conference, a social media conference. I submitted a session to speak on podcasting and the session wasn't approved. And I emailed the person later and I said, do you have anybody talking about podcasting? This is a social media conference where is someone talking about podcasting. And still his response was kind of similar of, eh, podcasting this is social media we don't want to talk about podcasting <laughs> so i think the social media people social media managers uh, just anyone working with social media needs to recognize that podcasting is this huge connection for social media yeah i think i uh, similar here we have um in dc we have uh well they have a social media week dc and there were zilch for podcasting. Uh, and I said, hey, you guys, this social media, someone should be talking about podcasting. So I went and presented, I think, on their first podcasting-related presentation. So I get what you're saying here, too. And, and DC, I kind of see as this, uh, this early San Francisco, or San Francisco maybe 10, 15 years ago, where it's a cool little tech scene building up here. So uh, I'm, unfor I'm fortunately or unfortunately moving back to California, uh, which I'm excited about in a couple weeks here. So I won't be here to push the DC. But hopefully, maybe someone else will carry the torch. Yeah, also I wanted to mention, too, that I've been seeing an upswing in focus on podcasting festivals around the country, too. There's one one going on in New York and one in L.A. Hmm. Uh, and Not I think podcasts. It's in a, 
No, no, it's not podcast. It's a podcast festival. So it'll festival. be like a, um, you know, like a series of podcasts that are up on stage that that the event sells tickets to, hmm. right? Huh. So it's kind of like a comedy festival, but it would just be a it'd be a podcast mm. festival. Mm. So I've been doing some planning here in the Seattle area, trying trying to pull together a podcast festival in Seattle. I've uh, been been speaking with folks that are involved in the comedy side and speaking with people that are on the kind of on the radio side, trying to bring those worlds together a little bit and create a you know a podcast festival of sorts. Um, the whole concept is still coming together, but I know that there's a, like three or four of them going on around the country right now um, that are. It seems like are fairly successful. You're part of the world there, there in Seattle. Chris, uh, Chris Perillo had the uh, first. Uh, what what was the con he had? The YouTube con. The vlogger so, vlogger what? con. Vlogger fair. Vlogger fair. Oh, right, the festival yeah, yeah. for vloggers, right? So something yeah, like was, that. Yeah, it was actually right down the street from my house. It was only like five minutes away from my house. And, and um, YouTube's got the big VidCon, which is it brings out all the YouTube stars. So I mean, I think that podcasting probably should. Uh, look into having a festival where we can come together and celebrate. It's like a Woodstock for podcasters, right? Yeah, exactly. Peace. Peace. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Smelling like patchouli in here. All right. Well, <laughs> we should probably work our way out of here. I just want to have everyone uh, again tell us where we can find your awesome podcast. And uh, I think everyone here has a show. That is for sure. We have we have like shows and then shows on top of shows, right? Everyone's got their own podcast. A couple people have podcasts together. So lots of cool things. Again, thank you guys so much uh, for coming on. Uh, Daniel J down there on the uh, on the far left, see us at it. Get it. Get us out of here. <laughs> I'm Daniel J Lewis from the Audacity to Podcast dot com, the number or the awarded number one tech show in 2012. <laughs> Play it up. Get it while you can. That's right. Uh, I'm Dave Jackson. You can find me at schoolofpodcasting.com dot com and learn to podcast on Twitter. Awesome. Ray Ortega, podcastersroundtable dot com. Go check it out. And Rob Greenlee, I can be found at robgreenlee.com and at Rob Greenlee on Twitter. And also how we can get in touch with you to fix our feeds, right? Or anything else we need to do with the Windows phone, at Rob Greenlee will work. Well, yes, that. Or you can send me an email to podcasts, and that's with an S, at microsoft.com. And I'd be happy to add your show if you don't happen to have it in the catalog. Or like Ray said, if you have a problem or you need to change your cover art or something like that, I can help out with all those things. Awesome. And as podcasters, we thank Rob for doing that for, through all the years. Uh, you, you can't exactly get that kind of service at, at Apple. Although I will say... Uh, over the last maybe year, there is podcast at apple.com. That email works now. I have gotten wow. response. So, but Rob, it's nothing like what Rob gives us. So yeah. thanks again, Rob. And finally, <laughs> our, new round, our new round tabler, Todd Cochran. You can check me out at uh, geeknewcentral.com for my tech show that's done every Monday and Thursday night. And then, uh, of course, we want you to check out the new media show. We do it live uh, every uh, Saturday or sometimes Sunday, usually at 9 a.m. Uh, uh, Pacific Standard Time. So uh, you can find that at newmediashow.com as well. You can follow me on Twitter at Geek News. And, and when he says we, if I didn't make it clear, that's Rob and Todd do that no. show. And they get heavy hitters, right? I love this show. It was the Saturday morning tech show. And then you changed it uh, maybe a couple months ago. And I love this format. I, every time you post something, I, I rant about it because you guys were talking so much about podcasting networks and ads and Todd mm -hmm. has the insight to those things you've heard a little bit of, about that here he, he sees the behind the scenes stuff so they really dig into that Rob goes out and gets some big name guests so definitely check that out uh, it's a newer show but go over and rate it in iTunes because I want that show to stick around <laughs> I like it a lot so this <laughs> side of the this side of the room I'm sorry it's over here new media show this side podcasters roundtable steel cage match at NMX 2014 <laughs> we'll see you there and we'll see you at the next roundtable Wave bye, everybody.